And here we begin our, our trip into the central limit theorem. It's going to take a few days because, again, I want to take it slow, make sure you understand what it is that we're doing. We've, I've used this word several times, a sampling distribution. Well, it's obviously a distribution, right? But it's a little more complicated than that. It's a probability distribution of some sample statistic. It doesn't have to be the mean. It normally is. I mean, you could do range if you felt like it, or median, or mode, whatever you wanted to. Uh, that is formed when samples of size n, and what were our, our sample um, was, what did we do, 30 each time, I think, was our sample size. Every time when we did the dice experiment, we rolled it 30 times, and you marked it down. So that size n was 30 for us in the dice experiment, uh, repeatedly taken from a population. And the population here was all possible rolls that you could get. We kept taking a sample of that. Again, the statistic there, remember, that comes from a sample, statistic sample, parameter population, remember. And it could be any of the stats, but we normally use the mean. But you don't have to. I look at today as almost being more of a vocab for this section. Well, then obviously, what's a sampling distribution of sample means? Yeah, it's the same thing, but that stat, I'm telling you, that statistic we're talking about is the mean. That's really all it is. Okay. So it is that sampling distribution where the sample statistic is the sample mean. So some people, if you want, you could probably just draw an arrow and say that this sample statistic is the mean, you know, or something like that. That's really what it boils down to. Most commonly used. So here's some properties of a sampling distribution of sample means. What would you say got very, very, very close for us? We got really close to 7 for us, right? We got 6.95, something like that. So our mean of our sampling distribution got incredibly close to the mean of the, the actual, but the theoretical mean, or the mean of the population. Okay, we got incredibly close. And that is one of those, whoops, wrong one. The mean of the sample means, and then there's that notation, mu sub x bar, is equal to the population mean. You need me to, is there a glare? Oh. Yep, it's this one right here. Mu sub x bar is this the mean of the sample means. This next one is important. What happened when we did the dice game? We knew what the standard deviation was. But when we did the standard deviation of the whole thing, it was a lot lower. Correct? The standard deviation was almost disappearing, wasn't it? It was getting incredibly small. So the standard deviation can't be equal because that's not what happened. But there is actually a way to calculate that. The standard deviation of the sample means, again, that's just sigma sub x bar, okay, is equal to the population standard deviation, which is just sigma, divided by the square root of n. Or there's the formula for you if you just want to write that down. <laughs> I mean, that's really what all that first stuff's saying. So if you just want to make a note that this is just the standard deviation of 
that sample means, then this is just the formula for it right there. Which makes sense. It was much smaller, right? When we had our, I think we were down to like 0.2 or something like that for our standard deviation, weren't we? Just out of 30. And so that's believable. And that is called the standard error of the mean. Well, that could be a horrible color. Let's do that one. No, that won't be very good. Let's do that one. Go away. Uh, not much better, but you can see it. Yep. And what's N again in this case? Just in general? The size of what? Each sample. Not how many samples did you take? but the size of each sample. So in our dice, I think we only took what you took three each, right? So in our dice, you, we took 24 samples, but what was N24 in that experiment we did? No, N was what you took each time, and each time you took 30, okay? So keep track of what N is. Everybody good? You don't have to write every word, you know, because you guys look it up. I think the formula is the most important. The best part is that the mean should be pretty much the mean. Standard deviation, not so much. Okay. Meaning your distribution is going to go from very wide and it's going to suck right in. Okay. It's a sampling distribution. I'm taking a stat from a bunch of samples and I'm making a distribution out of that. So the mean doesn't move. If the mean's right here, it's going to stay right there. But everything that's way out here is just going to, it's going to suck right in. Okay. And I think you'll see that I got some, I wish the scan I had would have worked out better. I'll, I'll just do them by hand quick, but you'll see it. Here's the one example we're going to worry about today. So let's say you actually did this. You had some little slips of paper of equal size, because obviously you want to make it the same chance of pulling that thing out. You don't want to put a one on it huge piece of paper and the other ones are teeny tiny that wouldn't be very fair so you write one three five and seven on those slips of paper you uh, put them into some kind of box or a hat or something you randomly choose two slips of paper yes put it back in though okay list all possible samples of size n equal two the reason you have to put it back in is the word independent is kind of important in the central limit theorem this book kind of foregoes that but independent is kind of important put it back in, right, because if I didn't put it back in, they would be dependent, correct? And so the independent is a word they just kind of breeze over in this book, but it's kind of important here. Uh, list all possible samples of size two. So I'm only picking two, right? Obviously, you can't pick six. Well, you could, I suppose, but it'd be a waste of time. Uh, and calculate the mean of each. These mean form a sampling distribution of the sample means. Determine the mean variance and standard deviation of the sample means. Compare your results with this right here. I'm telling you, the mean is 4. I'm telling you the variance is 5, which makes the standard deviation 2.236. It's been a long week, weekend. How do you get the standard deviation again? Yeah, square root of variance. And so that's obviously the square root of 5. Okay? Well, do you agree these are all the possibilities that you could draw out of there if you drew two sheets of paper? Right? Well, what's the mean of this one? One and one, the mean is? One. One and two, the mean is? Two. One and five, the mean is? Okay. So go ahead and write those in. You should be able to, whoa. It's only about the hundredth time I've done that. It's okay. There are those. And I'd like you to do the other column on your own. Just real quick. Get your brains going again. It's been a long weekend. Find the mean of those. I'm pretty sure I can handle the last one. The mean of seven and seven. Yeah, should be pretty straightforward. I think yours had to go together into one table because the word was having some difficulty with it. I kept throwing the second table down on the next page and then I couldn't move it. And it was really kind of a pain. So go ahead and figure out those means.
So what's the mean of the first one? Are you sure? Yeah. Next one? All right, so there's your mean. So if I take all those means and turn those into a distribution, that's a sampling distribution of sample means, which is coincidentally what we're going to do on the back. So how many times did one pop up? Two popped up a bunch of times, what, twice? Three popped up a few times. Four popped up. So let's figure it. You figure that out. Find your frequency, and that's what we're going to do on the next page. So there is your frequencies. Hopefully, that's what you came up with. Okay. And I'm, I'm below here. I'll sketch for you by hand kind of what has happened as we've done this. It doesn't seem as though we've done anything overly impressive yet, does it? We just said, oh, this is what can happen if you draw two of them. Here's the means. All right, let's, let's see what happens. Relative frequency, here's another review thing that I want to do and make sure you can do this, because I've kind of been giving this to you on the computer a lot. Okay, What am I doing here? What is this? Okay, so relative frequency, like this whole table, what am I really doing here? In this whole table, what am I trying? Yeah, I'm finding the mean, the variance, and finding variance, because I have to find variance to find what? Standard deviation. Okay. All right. So how do you figure out relative frequency again? Divide by the total, right. How many times did you have it divided by how many were out there, right? Okay. So what we should probably find is what's the total of which column, x bar or f? Yeah, frequency. Well, it's the total. How many do we have? Well, 16. Is that right? So then how do we find this first relative frequency? Well, it happened once out of? So divide 1 divided by 16, and then take 2 divided by 16, then 3 divided by 16, then 4 divided by 16. I hope you don't actually have to do that one. Okay. And then once you do those four, you should be able to fill in the other three because you already have the answers. Right? So those are good with fractions. You probably don't even have to do two divided by sixteen, but I don't know how many of you know one eighth as a as a decimal. Okay, so what is one divided by sixteen? Point zero six two five is correct. Two divided by sixteen, otherwise known as one eighth. One, two, five. Three divided by 16. 0.1875. You better know this next one. 0.25. And then we already know those, right? So you just fill them in again. You don't have to, I mean, you could do them again, but it's a waste of your time. All right, so there's your relative frequency, otherwise really known as what as far as the rest of this table is concerned. Yeah, P of X. That's your probability, right? So now you have to take x times p of x. Well, really, it's not just x in this problem. It's, I mean, this kind of is x over here, but in this particular case, x is just your random variable, right? Well, these are my random variable over here now. So really, in this case, I could say take x bar times p of x, right? Is really what we're doing here. So if you want, I can fix that. There you go is really what's happening, because this is the sample means. So let's go ahead and do that. So I got the first one. 1 times 0 0.0625. Yep, that was a tough one. It's 0 0.0625. So you take 1. Yeah, well, actually, 2 times this one's not that hard either. <laughs> you, know, you know, 3 times that. You know, 4 times this one. I got that one. 5 times that one. 6 times that one. 7 times that one. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And again, I actually want you to calculate this. Get your brain flowing a little bit.
So yeah, two times 0.125, that's pretty simple. Right? Three times that, uh, not too bad. Right? Oh yeah, this one's easy, one. So then how come this next number is not gonna match? Yeah, a bigger number, right? It's not gonna match the 0.5625, right? And all of a sudden, oh, there's another answer there. Hmm, where'd that come from? I believe the mean should be should be four. Unless one of my numbers is wrong. One of my numbers wrong? I typed them in, so. And how'd you find, how did I find the mean then? What's four? Yeah, you add them all up. It's four. Okay. Remember, when you do it this way, it's kind of like you've divided already. You've divided by how many tests you've had already. I've had 16 tests in this case, right? I've already divided by 16 in each case, so I can just add them up because it's a common denominator. It's the same thing as adding them all up and then dividing by 16. It still works the same way. Now we have to take x bar in this case minus mu, which and mu is what here? Mu is 4, right? So x bar minus mu, so here's x plus, you take 1 minus, well, these are nice and easy, like the mean ended up being 4, huh? So you take 1 minus 4, you take 2 minus 4, you take 3 minus 4, 4 minus 4, so forth and so on. And there it is. And really, without even... Without, e without even adding that column, you should be able to tell me what the answer should be really close to unless rounding kind of threw it off a little bit. That column better add to what every single time? Zero. You're going to get negatives. You're going to get positives. That's the problem. Remember, we have two ways of solving that problem. We can take the absolute value or we can square it. Which one do we choose to do? Why do we choose to square it? But we could solve it with absolute values. Why do we choose? It gives you one answer instead of where a median, which is the absolute value, could give you many. Okay. And so we do the squaring because we know it'll get us to just the one. And even squaring that's pretty straightforward, right? I feel it's nice to you on this Monday morning. Yeah. And really, even taking that times the probability, well, that's a little bit harder. but Not the ones or the zero. Everybody ready? You know how to do that last one then? Again, it's X bar in there. <laughs> and then find variance for me once you get those down. What'd you get? 2.5? Hmm. So let's see if we can apply what we because then what's the standard deviation? You got to take the square root of 2.5, correct? And that's something I didn't write down yet. It's about 1.581, something like that. Do you agree with that? Well, that's a lot of work, huh? nice if we could potentially do that faster. Well, the mean is supposed to be 
the mean of the sample means is supposed to be equal to the population mean. What was the population mean? Four. What did we get? Four. Standard deviation is 2.216 in this case. How can I get to that answer for the sample? Take the standard deviation of the population and divide by the Yeah, square root of 2, right? Because n was 2 in this case, 2, sa two sample size. So why don't we take that uh, 2.236 that you see right there on this page, just out of curiosity. What was it again? 326? 236. And divide that by square root of 2. Oh, 1.581. Imagine that. No way. Now, here's basically what happened. And I'm going to do it all on this page. I'm going to show you kind of what you did. It comes out to the same 1.518. When we started, we could have a, what, a 1, a 3, a 5, and a 7, right? And if I made a histogram for that, what was the probability of just drawing a 1? Just drawing a 1. 1 fourth, right? I'm the, from the beginning, just drawing 1. Do you agree that it would be big old box here, big old box there, big old box there, and big old box there, right? They're each, they're each one quarter. Oh, that's wonderful. But then we started taking some samples of different sizes. We took samples of two, right? And what really happened, which you should notice, this came out very nice, it didn't have to, is that the only one that actually ended up staying there was this one. And what happened is this one was a little lower, so was that one. This one was a little lower, so was that one. Do you agree that's what happened when we took a sample? So it went from something uniform to something something normally distributed. So just taking a very small sample of just two, we went from something that was individually uniformly distributed to something that was very, very well normally distributed. Is it necessarily the standard normal distribution there yet? But it's definitely very, very nice to the normal distribution. It's, I mean, it's symmetric. It's perfect. Are all of them going to work out that perfect? No. But this is an idea of this was only two. Again, who wants to sit there and take a sample of 30 from each one and sit there and keep writing them down? You did that, and this thing would be perfect. Or really, really close. Because the mean was close already, and so was the standard deviation. But the bigger the sample goes, that standard deviation, depending on the situation, is going to start shrinking. Okay. So do you understand what a sampling distribution is? That's key. You run a bunch of samples. Normally, you find the mean from that sample. You throw just the means information into a pool, basically. And then somebody else does it. They throw a mean in from their sample. Somebody else throws one in. Somebody else throws one in. Okay. And then we make a distribution off of that. And that's the key.